Hello there, science friends, and welcome once again to Photoshop for the Scientist. Thanks for tuning in. So I know it's been many, many months since I've released a video, and that's mainly because I basically ran out of ideas. But thankfully, YouTube user MT has come to the rescue by asking a question about measuring some areas in Google Earth. And I thought this was a really cool idea. Um, I'm usually used to measuring really, really small things. Um, but in this case, we're going to be measuring something really big. So a bit of a change. Um, and I thought, what better thing to measure than some deforestation in the Amazon rainforest? Because uh, I just thought it'd be nice to make a depressing video. So first of all, let's... Uh, well, I've loaded up Google Earth here, and we're going to go down to the Amazon rainforest, which, if my memory serves, somewhere around this area. And I'm going to be looking for a specific spot, because this is the spot I was practicing on earlier. And this uh, looks like what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to kind of randomly zoom in to a, an area, maybe something like this. I might try to line it up. I really just like having, uh, come on, come on. I like having this line very horizontal for no reason at all. Uh, I just think it, it looks nice to me that way. So let's, uh, let's just stick with this view here. So before we do anything, uh, I just want to do a couple measurements so I can show you how things compare to Photoshop. So I'm going to go up to Tools and select Ruler. And I'm just going to draw out a rough uh, rectangle here. So I'm just going to kind of arbitrarily drop some points down, maybe out here, here. I want to try to keep a straight line as possible, because that will make my life easier in Photoshop. Then draw up a line over here, and maybe one up here. And that was not very good, so I'm going to try to adjust this. Uh, that looks fairly rectangleish to me. Um, the point is, I just want to point out that we've got uh, an area here, you can see in my ruler tool, of about 72,000 square kilometers. And for our Imperial friends, that would be 27 or almost 28,000 square miles. But I, as a Canadian, I'm going to stick with square kilometers. Um, okay, so remember that number because uh, we're going to refer back to it um, shortly. But before we do that, there's uh, there's some cool things you can do in Google Earth, and one of them is to fly back in time to see how things have changed. So let's go up here to View and select Historical Imagery. So I think this is today's date up here, so October uh, 2017, but I think it goes up to 2016, this imagery. Um, in either case, I want to fly back about 20 years, so let's go back to 1996, right here. So you can see, even just from looking at these pictures, things have changed quite a bit, um, sadly, but it's the way it goes, I suppose. Anyways, okay, so we've got now the 1996 image and the 2016 image, but we need to get them in the Photoshop. So it's pretty easy to do. All we need to say is go up to Edit and say Copy Image, and then we'll load up Photoshop, which I've already loaded. And actually, and I'll make a new file here. But I'm just going to paste in what we just copied, so you can see, perfect. Uh, the timeline, uh, historical imagery is gone and the ruler is gone, which is great. Um, and then I will go back into Google Earth and I will fly back to the future and do the exact same thing. Say edit, copy image, go back to Photoshop and paste this in as a new layer, just by default. So you can see now, and just to keep myself organized, I will call this layer 2016 and I will call this layer uh, 1996. Okay, so we've got this uh, yellow rectangle here, which you, if, if you remember correctly, because um, I don't, it was 72,000-ish square kilometers. So I just want to show how we can actually measure this in Photoshop, um, which this is good to show because I think a few other people have also asked me how to calibrate your measurement scale in Photoshop. And uh, Google Earth makes it very easy because it's got this scale bar right here that we can use for reference. So what I'm going to do is zoom in on that scale bar, Oops, or just zoom in and then go to the scale bar with uh, Control Plus. And now I want to go up to Window and go to Measurement Log. And I'm going to choose the little drop-down menu here, and I'm going to say Set Measurement Scale, and I'm going to choose Custom. And so what we're go uh, going to be basically doing here is saying how many pixels equals uh, what our scale is. In this case, it's 92 kilometers. So right now it's a pixel length of 1. Um, but we can change that just for, uh, by clicking and dragging along our scale bar here. So I'm going to just drag from one end to the other, which seems to be about 320 pixels. And we want to say the logical length, in this case, is 92 kilometers. 
So I'll put in 92 here, I'll just type that in. And our logical units are kilometers instead of pixels. So we can see here this says 9, uh, 320 pixels equals 92 kilometers. And we just have to say OK to save that in. And I'm going to zoom out a bit using Control minus so I can see the whole image. And I just want to show now um, if I do a rectangular marquee selection around my yellow uh, rectangle here, which uh, looks like it did a, not a terrible job of eyeballing out a rectangle. But I'll measure out a roughly equivalent area. And when I hit now record measurements, actually I should point out that you should, if you don't see the same uh, measurements that I'm getting, you can go to select data points and choose custom. And then I've just selected uh, label, scale, scale units, and area. And you've got a few others to choose from here, which I've covered in some of my other videos. But you can see now that my area that I measured out is also 72,325 square kilometers. Um, which is pretty close to what we had in uh, Google Earth. So I had 72,266, and in Photoshop I have 72,325, which I'm just going to chalk up to the uh, selection being a tiny bit different. So it's pretty cool uh, with Photoshop how you can measure areas like that. And we're going to take this to the next level by um, measuring a little more than just this rectangle. And we're going to actually measure some of the deforestation that's gone here. Um, but first we need to uh, crop out some of this extra stuff because I don't want it to interfere with these calculations. So firstly I'm just going to double click this tab here to minimize it. And I'll hit Control D to deselect and I'm just going to use the crop tool to crop down just below this uh, yellow line because I don't want that interfering with my measurements. So it doesn't really matter. Just kind of want it out of the way. And that looks like it should do. So maybe I'll zoom in a little bit with uh, Control plus. Nope, too far. Control minus. Okay, so we've got our image here that we want to work with. So we can see 2016 and 1996, but we want to actually figure out uh, the actual area of these uh, deforest uh, deforested, yeah, deforested areas in square kilometers. And uh, we're going to be doing this using a technique that's pretty much identical to what I did in my video of how to measure fibrosis in a histological section. Um, but in this case, we're just going to be measuring uh, dirt and trees as opposed to fat and fibrosis. Uh, but the idea, uh, the main idea of what we want to do is just to be able to isolate these two colors. Now, if you go to your channels tab here, you've got your RGB channels. And if you look at each of these, uh, individual red, green, and blue channels, uh, you can see that each of them has sort of a varying degree of contrast. And we want to try to exploit this contrast as much as possible to get sort of our whites as white as possible and our blacks or our darks as dark as possible. And the way you can achieve this is by using the calculations uh, tool. And that's found in image uh, down at calculations. And so the whole idea of this tool is you want to select two channels um, and you basically, you've got a whole bunch of options here, but typically you'd be using add or subtract. And when you use add or, add or subtract, what's functionally happening here is that your top channel, if for instance, let's say we did add, uh, your top channel, which you could choose anything, uh, is going to be every single pixel uh, with a, a gray value of 0 to 255 will be added to every equivalent pixel in your second channel here. And I've just done red to red, so um, we're just adding these channel or the two. Uh, oh, and I also have an offset here, which I don't want. So I'm just going to scoot that up to uh, zero. But basically, you're just adding pixel values together. And subtracting uh, is basically the opposite. You're just subtracting some pixels from the others. So Obviously, when we do uh, red subtracted from red, we're subtracting every pixel value from every other pixel value, which goes to zero, which is black. So to be perfectly honest with you, while I think I understand this conceptually, at the end of the day, I always just kind of kind of finagle around here until I find something that works really well. Um, and in this case, after much trial and error, uh, what I found was that I used uh, the blue channel for my first source. And in my second source, I used the red channel, but I inverted it. Um, the other thing we want to make sure that we're doing, too, is uh, using the right layers. So in this case, uh, merged and 2016 is selected. But I want to do both 2016. 
and merged would have been the same, but just to uh, just to make everything clear, I want 2016 on both layers. Uh, I'm not going to get into opacity, offset, and scale. Um, those are other things you can use to try to enhance your contrast, but uh, as I said, after much trial and error, this seems to be sort of the best contrast that I got. So with that, I'm going to say OK, and it's going to create this new alpha channel here, which I will call 2016. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing, uh, but for my 1996 channel. So I'll go up to Image, and I will do Calculations, and I just need to select 1996 for my layers. And then again, I'm going to choose the blue for Source 1, and for Source 2, I'm going to do an inverted red. And you can see we've got a pretty nice contrast where all of our brown areas are, have gone to black, and all of our um, grassy areas or tree areas have gone to white. And it doesn't really matter whether they're black or white. The idea is that we just want to get as much contrast as possible. So I will say OK, and I will call this 1996. OK, so the next thing we need to do is enhance the contrast even further. And I'm going to use the threshold tool for that, which is basically just going to, um, at a certain value, make my blacks or my grays uh, totally black and my light colors totally white. So let's do that by going to Image, say Adjustments, and choosing Threshold. And so, again, this is something that I kind of just eyeball, but you can kind of see there's kind of almost two humps here. Um, these are my dark values on the left-hand side, sort of from 0 to 128. And above 28, 128, these are kind of the lighter values. So I can kind of scrub either way, but you see that as I do that, this area here, which is all light, starts to get uh, turned into black as well. I mean, we could go all the way, but that's pointless. So I kind of just try to select something roughly in between these two peaks. Um, in this case, you know what, I'm just going to go 128, which is the exact middle. And I'll say OK. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with 1996. So I'll go Image, Adjustments, Threshold, and choose 128. You can see, though, in this case, the humps are a little less well-defined. But it's important that we use the exact same threshold level um, for each each layer, because we want to treat them uh, just the same, since we're going to be comparing measurements. So once we've got uh, these sort of thresholded out, we can actually see how well we've done with our selection of these dehorsed areas. Um, so right now I've got 1996 selected. Actually, I'm going to go to 2016 first. And if I go back now and select my RGB channel, oh, OK, well, I just want to basically put the eyeball on 2016 here so that uh, we can see the actual selection that we've saved off. I'll just toggle this on and off a few times. And you can see how well um, we've actually selected those deforested areas. Um, if you're not seeing kind of like this big contrast here, you can uh, double click the thumbnail and choose whatever color you want. I think by default it might be like red and 50% maybe. But I set it to 100% so it's very easy to see. Yeah, now it's red. Uh, similarly, we can do the same thing with 1996, just by way of example. So I will hide my 2016 layer, and I, my 2016 selection, and I will choose my 1996 uh, selection. And you can see it's like done a just a pretty good job of selecting out that area. I'll toggle that on and off a bit. Um, yeah, it's pretty great. Okay, so now we need to do our actual measurements, um, and we can do that. Uh, well, just like I covered in the other video, but to remind you, uh, first we need to get rid of these. And we want to load up this selection. So what I'm going to do is hold the Control key, and then we'll start with 2016, and I'm going to click the little thumbnail here. And so when I do that, it's basically selecting all of the white area. And I actually want to select the black area, because that's the deforested area. So I'm going to invert my selection by doing Control shift i And then I'm going to go back up to Window Measurement Log. And I'm going to hit record measurements. It might take a while because there's lots of things to measure here, lots of tiny little specs. And we're going to get a whole whack of measurements out. But really, the only one that we're interested in is the very first one, which in this case says measurement 8, because this is the total area of all of them combined. And so we can see here that we have a total deforested area of 24,000 kilometers, uh, 642, um, which seems like a lot. Um, but let's compare. So let's look at 1996. So first I'm going to hit Control D to deselect. And again, I'm going to do the same thing with 1996. I'll hold Control and click the thumbnail. I will invert my selection by hitting Control Shift I. And I know it might look a bit confusing because I still have my uh, 2016 layer visible here, but I'll hide that. 
And I will just do the exact same thing. I'll hit record measurements. Let Photoshop do some thinking. And here we have measurement nine. So in this case, uh, we have an area of 10,276 square kilometers. So yeah, 10,000 and 24,000. So yeah, just uh, two and a half times, I guess, about. So yeah, that's that's sad, but I don't have anything to say. I guess we what we can appreciate is the ability to do this in Photoshop. <laughs> so um, if you're out there and you'd like to take some measurements of your own, um, maybe make a point, a political point, or an environmental point, or if you want to look at uh, development in your community, really there's uh, the sky's the limit with uh, with Photoshop. The main points are that you just want to find your area, be able to isolate out the colors, so you can sort of make one area black and one area white, and then run the measurement command uh, after you've set your scale, of course. But anyways, uh, I hope that was satisfying for you, MT. I hope you can use uh, these techniques to measure your own Google Earth images. But for now, I guess I will sign off by saying, well, firstly, I will say, um, feel free to sign up and support uh, Photoshop for the Scientists on Patreon. Um, it's really, it will cost you almost nothing because I'm releasing very few videos these days. Uh, but at the very least, it is nice to know that I have some support out there. Um, otherwise, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please, uh, I fully encourage you to leave them in the comments below because it gives me some inspiration to make some new videos. But for now, I will sign off by saying, remember, you worked hard to get that data, so why not uh, work a little harder and uh, do some measurements inside Photoshop. Alright, that's all for today, folks. I will see you all next time.